How you doing guys? I'm Matt Walden. Today we're here in the Mishimoto Laboratories and I'm about to show you how to install this Mishimoto radiator here in the 2010 and up Hyundai Genesis V6. Follow me, let's check it out. Tools required for the installation of the Hyundai Genesis V6 Mishimoto radiator would be Phillips head screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, lineman's pliers, 10 millimeter socket, extension, ratchet, coolant, and coolant funnel. Installation time is about an hour and a half and a three out of five on a scale of difficulty. All right, before beginning any work on your car, make sure you're parked on a level surface. The e-brake is set and the car is completely cooled off. You don't wanna be working on this thing when it's hot. Go ahead and jack it up, secure it on jack stands, and away we go. After you've got the car securely supported on jack stands, go ahead and remove the four silver 10 millimeter head bolts that cover the front splash shield on this guy. Now with the lower splash shield removed, you can locate the radiator drain plug and open it up by twisting it counterclockwise. All right, back up top here, we're gonna go ahead and remove the intake box and system from this car. This particular intake will be in the way for the radiator install. After the intake system is removed, remove the four plastic screws that will run across the front air dam. Next, remove the upper radiator hose by squeezing the clamps and moving them down the pipe. Same process on the lower hose. Squeeze the clamp together and slide it down the hose. Next, we're gonna remove the coolant overflow tank. And there's two 10 millimeter head screws that hold this on and one clip in the bottom of the fan shroud. Unclip this all the way across and disconnect it from the radiator water neck. Next, to remove the fan shroud, we're gonna unplug the fans and remove the two 10 millimeter head bolts that bolt it into the radiator. Now, some of you more savvy Genesis owners may have noticed that the trans cooler lines on this particular radiator are not being used. This is, in fact, an automatic vehicle, and this owner has already installed the Mishimoto automatic trans cooler kit to this vehicle. This will be required if your car is a V6 automatic. Remove the fan shroud by pulling up on it slightly, releasing the hooks on the bottom of the radiator, pushing it towards the engine for the time being. All right, we're almost ready to remove the radiator, but we have to remove the AC condenser bolts first. Clearly this Genesis owner used to own an Audi because he's changed all these bolts from regular heads to Allen heads. This on a typical Genesis is a 10 millimeter standard head bolt. On this particular car, he's changed it to Allen's. Remove these two, which is the upper radiator bracket, and the same on the other side. Remove the upper radiator stays, and you're gonna go ahead and pull the radiator out. Be sure to unclip the AC condenser from the radiator on its way out. Now that the radiator is out, we can actually get access to the back of this wiring clip inside of the fan shroud here. Squeeze that guy together and remove the entire piece. All right, with both radiators out and side by side, the difference is clear that the Mishimoto is clearly better in cooling. And you can tell that not even in the car yet, because the core itself is about three times as thick as the stock core. Not only that, there's no plastic on the Mishimoto unit, and coupled with a lifetime warranty, that pretty much guarantees that you'll never have an issue with this. 
before installing the Mishimoto radiator into the Genesis, you need to transfer the lower radiator mounting pegs from the OE rad over to the Mishimoto. Now that the bottom mounting pegs are on, we're ready to put this guy in the car. While making sure the bottom pegs are in the holsters for the lower rad support, relocate the AC condenser to the hooks on the front of the radiator. Install the three 10 millimeter head bolts that hold the AC condenser to the actual radiator. Once the AC condenser is bolted to the front of the radiator, reinstall the upper radiator mounts. Get everything oriented properly and slide the silicone hose onto the connections. For our next trick, we're gonna install the lower hose now. All right, once the lower hose has been reattached and the upper hose has been attached to the engine, reinstall the fan shroud and fan. The lower points on the fan shroud will clip directly into the radiator while the upper points bolt in. Don't forget to plug your fan back in and route the wiring. And once the fan shroud is in, we can complete the installation of the upper radiator hose. And the coolant overflow. Make sure the bottom peg on the coolant overflow is firmly seated in the fan shroud. Route the hose back in the clips across the top of the fan shroud and connect it up by the radiator cap. For our next trick, we will reinstall the front air dam. Next, we'll reinstall the intake. If yours is equipped with the stock air box, installation may differ slightly from the reference video. Now, when refilling the coolant, you want to either use a 50-50 mix of coolant and distilled water, or you can buy it in the 50-50 mixture as sold in the stores. Now, before you go ahead and start it up, make sure you turn the heat on high and make sure all the air bubbles are out of the system before taking it for a drive. Make sure you have solid heat coming out of the vents. This is Matt Walden signing off. Enjoy your Mishimoto products.